Hi, it's Paul Sack. It's Good News Planet. I'm speaking to Tony Richards. Hi, Tony. How are you? Yeah, real good, thanks. Uh, Paul, how's yourself? Okay, good. Uh, I came across uh, your uh, uh, background and the kind of things you do, and, uh, and I said, I need to talk to this guy. You wrote a book called Self-Confidence for Happiness and Success, and uh, instinctive achievement is the catalyst for the growth of self-confidence in all of us, beginning at birth. As a birthright claim, we should do whatever it takes to develop our self-confidence. We are entitled to feel good, that's, I love that word, good, about ourselves all day and every day. All right, we should feel good about ourselves. But uh, I guess sometimes we don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, and, and, of course, no matter who you are in the world, uh, uh, Paul, you can have moments of uh, doubt and uncertainty. But the thing about uh, self-confidence is that uh, for many years, uh, people, and there are still people, uh, who don't realise that it's something that can be taught and it's something that nobody has to go without uh, because it comes to us through two different streams. The first one, which we all, the first stream we all crave but have very little access to, uh, and that is um, uh, things like uh, physical attractiveness, money, a celebrity status, um, a great talent of some sort, uh, and achievements that are balanced against perceived failures. And although we spend most of our lives chasing those things, it, it is only the extraordinary amongst us who actually uh, get access to, to those. Most of us are just ordinary people, and, um, and we have to struggle uh, on our own. So I spent more than 30 years studying the uh, subject till I came up with a process uh, and the process consists of five critical steps for anybody to gain and maintain self-confidence forever. And that was because instead of concentrating on that, those external providers of self-confidence, uh, I came up with a program that, uh, that goes to the internal development of self-confidence. Okay. Uh, and that's all wrapped around uh, what I called a self-confidence continuum. Uh, and the continuum is... Um, is something that defines self-confidence in the first phase, um, and, and that is self-confidence is the mental attitude of having trust in, respect for, and reliance on our own judgment and or abilities. And the second phase talks about principles, those principles generally, of trust, respect and reliance, but other principles, uh, and how um, they govern uh, our conscience and are reflected in our character. And the third phase of the continuum uh, talks about being faithful to conscience and character so that we, uh, pro it provides for us to have an enhanced self-image. And the fourth, fourth phase tells us what we already know is that you have, uh, if you have a positive self-image, uh, that promotes initiative, everything becomes easier, and that uh, creates the development of instinctive achievements. And, of course, as you mentioned at the start, instinctive achievements from initiative are the catalyst for the growth of all self-confidence. So the five critical steps were important, uh, but they locked us into something that, that we could all learn. So, uh, that we can all learn. So, you know, you've, one, you say it's our birthright. Two is then acting in this, in a, in a positive self. I agree, I think self-confidence is numeral uno. Our, after health, then I, I would put self-confidence, feeling that you're entitled to good in the world you're in you and that you are a good person and that you b believe in yourself um and that self-esteem um is the greatest uh uh opportunity for you to live a healthy life i think and, it, i and, think it'll even keep you healthy and that's the point yes you mentioned uh health let me tell you without a shadow of a doubt that self-confidence also keeps you healthy because what it does is when you're self-confident you have a healthier lifestyle because you have respect for yourself. You see your worth as a human being when, you're high, when you have high self-esteem. Uh, you, do, you don't do things that are going to um, uh, physically or mentally hurt your body or mind because, um, uh, because of uh, the worth that you hold yourself in. Uh, and also, when you get ill, if illness comes your way, self-confidence actually helps you to overcome that. Uh, that illness as well. I know plenty of people who have used my processes and they tell me that um, 
that the positive thinking about who they are and their worth makes them get over any illness much more quickly. Uh, and, and some people have, uh, that I won't repeat have given me outrageous claims about how their self-confidence has um, s- uh, cured their cancer and things like that. Uh, but, but as I say, I, I, you know, those are things people tell me, and I would never say that, make a claim to being able to do those things. Uh, all, all I'm saying is that uh, self-confidence, if you have it, everything else in your life falls into place. So how do, when, you know, some people say, you know, we're born, in essence, this pure little uh, being, and uh, and everything is gorgeous and, until some parent or somebody says, no, you can't do that, or no, you can't do this, <laughs> and then you start to, to, I mean, do you start to question yourself at, uh, you know, Two, you're absolutely three, right. Two, two months old, are you now like saying, "Oh, you know, I I, I reach I, I reached for the for the, the the bottle of beer," and my mom said, "No, you got to drink milk," you know, yeah. or, or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you like you're from Australia. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of the disastrous thoughts the poor child's mind. <laughs> um, look, you're right, Paul. That um, and there is a lot of evidence that. that uh, that uh, I can show that uh, we are actually born with all the positive uh, principles that we need uh, to be self-confident. Uh, and, it's, and it is uh, initiative that uh, makes us achieve things, like uh, using our opposable thumb to pick up a spoon for our first feed, like making ourselves uh, pull ourselves to our feet for the first time. These are all instinctive actions that you can see are developing self-confidence because they're creating an identity in the baby. And yes, it is the rest of the world that takes that office little bit by little bit. And just because we're going to run out of time, let me tell you what the five critical steps are. Um, and I'm more than happy to come back and talk to you at another time, if you like, Paul, uh, about these. And also take questions from uh, your listeners if they send in an email to you. Uh, but the five critical steps for gaining and maintaining all self-confidence is one to recognise and embrace your own uniqueness. Accept that you're different and see that that's a good thing to be. And that's something that can be taught. Second step is to acknowledge and celebrate all of your achievements. Um, And the third step is to write a life contract with yourself. Uh, And that's something that you're not supposed to remember. It's something you write down so you're taking the intangible thoughts of your value and you're putting them in black and white so you can read it as often as you need. The fourth step is to set some goals but link them to the life contract. Use it like a a business plan where you've got policy statements and then procedures to to get to those policy statements. That's the setting goals process. And the fifth and final step is to apply it to your life. And when you do that, every single day is a great day. Let me ask you one more thing. We we do have... I'm going to take a couple more minutes. And Yes, I do want to talk to you more uh, in depth uh, on this, but let me just add in, in closing one one last. How how do we handle? And I I think that uh, you know there's sticks and stones that will break your bones and names will never hurt you. But the thought of somebody judging you and verbally judging you, I in my life I'll just use myself as an example. Um, I try to say you're entitled to your thought, <laughs> you're entitled to your opinion, you're entitled to say I'm stupid, you're entitled to say I'm ugly, you're, you're entitled to say whatever you want. And I'm entitled to hear it, you know, respect your whatever you want to say, but not let it tear down my own personal self-esteem. And I have I try to live under that, maybe it's naive, maybe I should be, get upset with somebody, but I try not to let somebody else, there was a woman in my growing up days who sang. She was, I can't say she was the greatest singer, but it didn't matter. She said, if they could do any better, I, let them go up on stage. Yep. Her, she had so much self-confidence. What do you say about putting yourself out there in the real world, like every day? What do you say about the people, about how to handle the people that might not be as positive for your sake? And you're absolutely right about what you've said, Paul, and how you overcome those things is in the critical steps because it takes uh, it, it takes uh, some days or weeks to teach the process that I've been talking about. But in the life contract that you write for yourself, uh, you're writing how you want to interact with the world. And the words you use that came out of your mind 
when you write them down and you say, um, uh, you can say what you like, I know my value, I know that I can do whatever I want to do. When you write them down, and as I say, you don't remember it because you've, what you've got to do is read it, so you're taking your intangible thoughts and you're making them concrete, you're giving yourself a foundation. And if you read that a dozen times a day, every time somebody said something that was less than positive to you, very, very quickly uh, what they say becomes irrelevant. And that's why that particular step in the five is so important. Okay, there it is. Last quick uh, uh, request is what is good news for you, Tony? Oh, good news for me is uh, when someone says I'm pregnant. I love babies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I for me, uh, children, uh, the company of babies and children, to see their little inquisitive minds uh, working, uh, to see them learning, um, and, and you can see it on their faces. Their little sponges are taking in everything about them. You have no idea how it warms my heart and it makes me feel wonderful to be a human being. It is, it is babies and children that I love more than anything. All I can say is ditto. Uh, right. And then just for uh, those that I believe should get a shot at this book, Self-Confidence for Happiness and Success, where can they get the book? Yeah, www.selfconfidencebooks.com uh, there's an email connection there. If anyone's got questions, I don't charge to answer questions to help people out. Um, if you've got any issues you want to uh, email me about, um, I will deal with them. Fantastic. Okay. Tony, part one. I look Good forward you, to part two. Thanks, my Good friend. Good mate. Take care. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.